Most people think dinosaurs ruled the Earth, then a giant rock from space wiped them out, and then humans showed up. But that's not even close to the real story. Between the last dinosaur and the first early human, there's a gap of 65.7 million years. To put that in perspective, if human civilization was just one day, this hidden era would be 180 years long. And this time period was absolutely packed with some of the most insane creatures that ever lived. We're talking about birds with teeth that could snap you in half, mammals the size of rhinos with claws like swords, and predators so terrifying they make T-Rex look like a house cat. But the common belief is that after the dinosaurs died, Earth was just this boring, empty place waiting around for humans to show up. And that couldn't be more wrong. I've spent months digging through research papers, talking to experts, and piecing together what really happened during these 65.7 million years. And what I found will completely change how you think about life on Earth. This isn't just some random time period, this is the era that built the world we live in today. Every mammal you see, every bird in the sky, every ecosystem on the planet, it all traces back to this hidden era that nobody seems to talk about. So in this video, I'm going to take you on a journey through the most overlooked period in Earth's history. We'll meet the monsters that ruled after the dinosaurs, discover how tiny mouse-like creatures became giants, and find out how this forgotten time shaped everything about our modern world. By the way, I'm David and I spend way too much time thinking about extinct animals, so if you love these stories, subscribe to the channel. All right, let's start with the moment everything changed. Around 66 million years ago when that massive space rock slammed into Earth. Let's imagine you're a small furry mammal about the size of a rat, hiding in a bush. The ground starts shaking like nothing you've ever felt. The sky turns red, then black. Burning rocks rain down from above. The air becomes poison and this nightmare lasts for months. When the dust finally settles, 75% of all life on Earth is gone. Every single non-bird dinosaur, dead. Giant marine reptiles, gone. Flying pterosaurs, wiped out. It was the worst day in Earth's history. But here's what's amazing. Some things survived, and these survivors weren't the biggest or the strongest. They were the small the hidden, the ones who could eat almost anything and live almost anywhere. The mammals that made it through were tiny. We're talking about creatures that could fit in your hand. They looked like a mix between a mouse and a shrew. They ate bugs, seeds, whatever they could find. They lived in burrows, in trees, anywhere they could hide. Birds survived too, but not the ones you might think. The giant toothy birds made it through, while many smaller, more delicate species died out. Some crocodiles survived by basically becoming living logs in swamps. Turtles made it because they could shut down their bodies and wait out the worst times. And here's the key point. These survivors were about to inherit an empty planet. All the big predators were gone. All the giant plant eaters were gone. It was like someone had cleared out every large animal on Earth and left behind a bunch of small, hungry creatures with unlimited room to grow. This is where our story really begins. Because what happened next was one of the most explosive periods of evolution in Earth's history. Now, you might think that after the dinosaurs died, mammals immediately took over. But that's not what happened at all. For the first 20 million years after the asteroid, the rulers of Earth weren't mammals. They were birds. Specifically, they were nightmare birds that would haunt your dreams. Meet the terror birds, and trust me, that name is not an exaggeration. The biggest of these monsters was called Kelenkin. This thing stood 10 feet tall and had a skull that was 2.5 feet long. Its beak was like a giant axe designed for one purpose, crushing bones and tearing flesh. But here's what made terror birds so deadly. They were fast, really fast. These weren't clumsy giants stumbling around. They could run up to 30 miles per hour on legs built like springs. Imagine a 10 foot tall bird with a skull like a battle axe chasing you at highway speeds. That's the stuff of nightmares. And they weren't just in one place. Terror birds spread across South America, North America, and even parts of Europe. For millions of years, if you were a mammal bigger than a house cat, you were basically bird food. The craziest part? Some terror birds survived until just two million years ago. That means early human ancestors might have actually seen these monsters, though that's still being debated. But terror birds weren't the only feathered nightmares. There was Gastornis, a six-foot tall bird with a beak that could crack nuts the size of bowling balls except the nuts were the skulls of early mammals. These birds ruled because they had something mammals didn't. They were already built for speed and power. While mammals were still figuring out how to get bigger, birds just had to scale up what already worked. But here's the thing about ruling the world. It never lasts forever. And the mammals were getting ready to fight back. Around 40 million years ago, something incredible started happening. 
The small, mouse-like mammals that survived the asteroid impact began to get big, really big. And I'm not talking about gradually getting a little bigger over time. I'm talking about an explosion of size that created some of the most incredible creatures ever to walk the Earth. Let me introduce you to Wintetherium. This thing was the size of a large rhino, but it looked like something from another planet. It had six horns sticking out of its skull and two massive saber teeth hanging down from its upper jaw. Its brain was tiny, about the size of a donut, but it didn't need to be smart. It just needed to be big and scary. But that was nothing compared to Corophodon. This beast weighed as much as a small car and had claws that could rip through trees like paper. It was basically a giant, angry beaver with the attitude of a honey badger. Then there was Andrew's Arcus. This predator had a skull that was three feet long and jaws that could bite through bone like it was a breadstick. Some scientists think it might have been the largest land predator mammal ever. It was like a wolf, but the size of a bear, with the bite force of a crocodile. Here's what's wild. These animals evolved in just a few million years. That's incredibly fast in evolutionary terms. It's like nature hit the fast-forward button on mammal evolution. But why did this happen? The answer is simple, opportunity. With the dinosaurs gone, there were all these empty roles in nature. Big plant eater, open position, giant predator, job available. Mammals just started filling these roles and the bigger you were, the better you did. This led to an arms race. Predators got bigger to hunt bigger prey. Prey got bigger to fight off bigger predators. And the cycle kept going until you had mammals the size of elephants roaming around just 20 million years after their ancestors were the size of mice. But the story gets even crazier when these mega mammals started to spread around the world. Here's something that will blow your mind. Whales used to walk on land. And I don't mean millions and millions of years ago. I mean, during our hidden era, there were wolf-like creatures that slowly turned into the ocean giants we know today. Meet Ambulocetus, which literally means walking whale. This 12-foot-long predator looked like someone took a wolf and stretched it out, then gave it webbed feet and a powerful tail. It lived both on land and in water, hunting fish in rivers and small mammals on shore. But here's the incredible part. We can actually trace the step-by-step -step evolution from land mammal to ocean giant. There's Pachycetus, which was basically a wolf that liked to hunt near water. Then Ambulocetus, the walking whale. Then Rodhocetus, which had tiny back legs and spent most of its time in the ocean. And finally, Basilosaurus, a 60-foot-long sea serpent that was fully aquatic. This transformation happened in just 15 million years. That's like watching a house cat slowly turn into a tiger, except the tiger lives in the ocean and is the size of a school bus. And whales weren't the only mammals heading to the sea. There were sea cows the size of manatees, early seals that looked like otters with attitude, and even early dolphins that had teeth like crocodiles. The ocean was becoming a mammal playground. But while some mammals were conquering the seas, others were taking to the skies in ways that would make birds jealous. The first bats appeared around 50 million years ago, and they weren't small, cute little things. Some of these early bats had wingspans of five feet and could probably carry off a small dog. They filled the night sky like flying nightmares, hunting everything from insects to small mammals. But the real ocean takeover was still coming. Because around 30 million years ago, something appeared in the water that would change everything the first true giant whales. These weren't just big, they were massive beyond belief. Liviaton melvilli was a sperm whale with teeth the size of bananas and a bite force that could crush a car. It hunted other whales for fun, and it shared the ocean with Megalodon, a shark so big it could swallow a great white shark whole. The hidden era wasn't just about land animals getting bigger, it was about life exploding into every possible space on Earth. Fast forward to about 2.5 million years ago, and Earth started to get cold, really cold. This was the beginning of the Ice Age, and it created some of the most incredible animals ever to exist. When the world gets cold, animals tend to get bigger. It's called Bergman's Rule. Bigger bodies hold heat better, and during the Ice Age, this rule created absolute monsters. Woolly mammoths are probably the most famous, but they were just the beginning. These weren't just hairy elephants, they were perfectly designed Ice Age machines. Their fur was so thick it was like wearing a winter coat made of other winter coats. Their tusks could be 16 feet long and were used like snow plows to clear away snow and find food. But mammoths had company. Giant ground sloths the size of elephants roamed North and South America. These things had claws that were two feet long and could probably tear down trees just to get to the leaves at the top. There was the Irish elk, which wasn't actually an elk and wasn't just from Ireland. This deer had antlers that spanned 12 feet from tip to tip. 
Imagine a deer the size of a moose with antlers so big it could barely fit through a forest. Cave bears were 30% bigger than modern grizzly bears and had skulls built like battering rams. Saber-toothed cats like Smilodon had teeth so long they had to learn a completely different way to bite. They couldn't just chomp down like modern uh -huh. cats. And then there was the short-faced bear. This thing stood 6 feet tall at the shoulder and 12 feet tall on its back legs. It could run 40 miles per hour and had a bite force twice as strong as a grizzly bear. It was basically a grizzly bear that went to the gym for a million years. These animals lived alongside early humans. Our ancestors shared the world with creatures that seem like they belong in a fantasy movie. Cave paintings show humans hunting mammoths. Archaeological sites have tools made from giant sloth bones. Early humans weren't just surviving in a world with these mega animals, they were thriving. But this Ice Age paradise couldn't last forever. And what happened next brings us right up to the edge of human history. Around 50,000 years ago, something started happening that would end our hidden era forever. The mega animals began to disappear. This wasn't gradual. This wasn't slow. In geological terms, it was almost instant. Woolly mammoths, giant ground sloths, saber-toothed cats, cave bears. They all started going extinct at roughly the same time. And there's a pattern to these extinctions that's impossible to ignore. Wherever humans showed up, the big animals disappeared shortly after. Australia lost its giant kangaroos and massive wombats right after humans arrived. North America lost 80% of its large mammals right around the time humans crossed the land bridge from Asia. Now, this is still debated among scientists. Climate change was happening too, the Ice Age was ending, and that definitely played a role. But the timing is just too perfect to ignore. Humans were becoming the ultimate predator. But here's the thing, early humans weren't just killing these animals for food. They were changing the entire world. They used fire to clear forests. They hunted in organized groups that could take down animals 10 times their size. They had tools and weapons that gave them advantages no other predator had ever possessed. By 10,000 years ago, most of the mega animals were gone. The hidden era was over. The age of humans had begun. And this brings us to the most important point of all. We are living in the shadow of this incredible time period. Every ecosystem on Earth, every animal we see today, Every relationship between predator and prey, it was all shaped by those 65.7 million years. The reason Africa still has large animals like elephants and lions is because they evolved alongside early humans and learned to be afraid of us. The reason other continents lost their giants is because humans arrived too quickly for the animals to adapt. We are the descendants of the survivors, not just the mammals that made it through the asteroid impact, but the humans who outlasted the Ice Age giants and inherited a world that had been shaped by 65 million years of incredible evolution. So the next time someone tells you that nothing interesting happened between dinosaurs and humans, you can tell them they're missing one of the most incredible stories in Earth's history. This hidden era gave us terror birds that ruled continents, mammals that grew from mouse size to elephant size in just a few million years, whales that walked on land before conquering the oceans, and Ice Age giants that shared the world with our ancestors. It was 65.7 million years of non-stop evolution, adaptation, and survival. It was the time when life rebuilt itself after the worst disaster in Earth's history and created a world so rich and diverse that it took a species as clever as humans to finally change the rules of the game. And here's the craziest part. We're still discovering new animals from this era all the time. Every year, paleontologists find fossils that add new chapters to this incredible story. The hidden era between dinosaurs and humans wasn't empty time waiting for us to show up. It was the most creative, explosive, and wild period in the history of life on Earth. And understanding it helps us understand not just where we came from, but what makes our planet so special.